What's going on, YouTube? This is Necro Stevor, and we are back with week, uh, the legendary week, the week that I can't remember the name of quite right. There we go, week five. Week five of the the Pokemon Premier League, which is especially exciting for me because I finally get to battle under the radar. And I'm this is just a matchup I was not looking forward to having because he had a lot of powerhouses drafted, but at the same time, I really just was looking forward to battling him generally. Now that being said, the matchup was a little bit hard to plan for because he had so many bulky Pokemon. Granted, I have a lot of Pokemon that can function as wall breakers. So with that in mind, I just had to try to predict what he would bring. And unfortunately, I guessed a little bit incorrectly. I did not think he would bring a Moongus. And I also did not think he would bring Reuniclus. Uh, of course, Reuniclus can't really do much with Pangoro around. And Amoongus struggles not only against Pangoro, but against um, my uh, uh, my Chandelure and my Obama Snow. So I thought between those possible threats, he would actually err more on the side of bringing his uh, Alamomola and the Toget and the Togetic, and even the Infernape. I thought I would see Infernape over the uh, Miltank, but I knew as soon as I saw Miltank that it might be Scrappy, um, just in order to hit Chandelure. Now on my side, of course, I I ended up going with a few. I guess unorthodox things, just because I wasn't sure what what type of bulk he'd be bringing. Um, so I have Pangoro, the mixed on Obama Snow, a nice defensive Clefable, which actually I think I ended up bringing unaware Clefable, um, a pretty bulky Rotom overall, uh, with access to rest in order to heal up, um, Life Orb Caesar, and then of course, uh, pretty pretty basic Chandelure there going for the, the life orb shenanigans to just power on damage here. So as far as leads go, Pangoro is just such a great lead. It gives me a nice way to not only lead with the Pokemon that represents my girlfriend, so it's like, yeah, we're leading into battle with your partner, but also it gets great neutral coverage here. He leads off with his Amoongus, and so I'm just gonna go straight for a powerful Zen head, but hoping for the flinch, I don't quite get it. And wow, that Sludge Bomb does a lot of damage back to me. Um, I was worried about him switching out into either his uh, Reuniclus or into maybe his Garchomp, just if he was running a bulky Garchomp, he could do that. I do call the Reuniclus switch, which is nice. Uh, I didn't know if I wanted to go straight for Shadow Ball or... Um, I knew I didn't want to go for Heat Wave, because if he went out into his um, Mill Tank, that means he probably had Thick Fat, and of course Shadow Ball doesn't hit the normal types. So I just went for Calm Mine here, hoping that he had Scrappy. Uh, if he had Scrappy, I could 2-8 KO him, which is why I bothered trying to do this in the first place. But since he has Earthquake, that means he probably doesn't have Scrappy. And this is all a waste of time. So I'm just going to go ahead and go for my Fire-type attack and be amazed with how little damage it does. Even though I'm at plus one, Life Orb would have been really, really nice there, but I had Leftovers in order to help my Substitute Call Mine shenanigans. Uh... I was, and also running Fire Blast could have been a thing, but I figured if I were running Call Mine, I could go forego the inaccuracy of Fire Blast. So here, I was expecting him to just go for another Earthquake, get out into Rotom. I was very dismayed to see him get all that HP back with Milk Drink, and now I lost all that HP on Chandelure for no reason. Um, we're just going to go for Will-O-Wisp here. Even if he has Heal Bell, it'll force him into using it, and if he doesn't, that means something else gets burned which I will definitely take that scenario. Now I was worried about Electros having Giga Drain, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go for a Volt Switch and use the opportunity to go back into Chandelure, hoping for an opportunity to set up on it, but he goes for Acid Spray, possibly trying to hit my Clefable, and that means I lose a lot of special defense, and that means even though I'll outspeed him, I probably can't one hit KO him, and he can one hit KO me pretty easily. So we're just going to go straight for Flamethrower here. It does not do as much damage as I really wanted it to. Yet again, missing the power, really, of um, Life Orb or Fire Blast. Each, either one of those could have put that into a, uh, a KO range. And now I'm going to go on to Obama Snow and completely overestimate Obama Snow's uh, offensive capability. Um, I really figured from that range, even though it was a roll, it was a really good roll in my favor to take it out with an Ice Shard. And it just doesn't do it. And so he hits me with the flamethrower, and I lose almost all of my HP, which was just stupid. 
Um, <laughs> that just, I don't know. That play just made me face palm when I did it at the time. So uh, he gets a free switch out into a zoom roll after his Electros goes down. I just go out into Rotom here, hoping that he go for Aqua Jet to pick up the free KO. But he, and that works out. Um, I know that uh, play rough will really hurt, but he doesn't look like he's banded based on that damage, so he might be Belly Drum. Uh, and so I was like, okay, maybe I can burn something. And then I realized, oh wait, he can just switch into Reuniclus and have Magic Guard, so it's not a big deal. Really should have gone for Volt Switch right there. That would have put me in a nice position to go out into Pangoro. Um, and then if he stayed in with his uh, with his um, Azumarill, then I would have done some nice damage to it too. But now that I'm on the back foot, we're gonna go out into Pangoro. I was predicting him to go for Hidden Power of Fire to hit my Caesar, but he just goes straight, straight for Focus Blast because why not predict the crap out of me? I didn't think that play was so predictable, but um, apparently it was. Very good play on his end. Now we're gonna go out into the Caesar because if he has Focus Blast, I don't think he'll have Hidden Power of Fire. That was kind of a 50-50. Uh, I'm just gonna go straight for knockoff because he still has a bunch of items floating around on his team. And since he doesn't have any Mega Pokemon, I can get a little bit of a damage boost from that. Uh, since Miltank comes in, I figured that it had Fire Punch. Otherwise, it can't really touch Caesar. And he does have Fire Punch, so that means a free switch back into Rotom. Uh, I can burn this thing, but I figured he actually might just go back out into Reuniclus to dodge the burn. And so that means my best move is really just Hydro Pumping, because if he starts getting up Calm Minds, that's going to be a problem. Um, I do have a tiny bit of special attack investment because I didn't know what to do with my leftover EVs. They didn't seem to make a difference as far as taking hits. And I thought for sure he'd switch out right there. Oh, I could have just gone for the Hydro Pump. I was so certain he was going to switch out, but he just stays in and recovers in my face so boldly. And that's probably that Reuniclus's nature is bold. Um, very, very, very risky play right there because I, I could have just Hydro Pumped him. Um, I go out into my Clefable and I go for Calm Mind knowing that Amoongus is probably coming in, but I have Psyshock. And so I was all on, on this, just riding high going, oh yeah, I can take the Sludge Bomb so very well, but I don't. I don't take it very well at all. Um, and I get Poison, which is pretty annoying um, as far as the birds chirping in the background, but that's okay because I'm Magic Guard, so I don't have to worry about the damage at the very least. Um, I just went for Moonlight there, expecting him to just keep on going for a Sludge Bomb, but he has Clear Smog, and that means I can't take that uh, Sludge Bomb nearly as well. And I was debating on whether or not to just go for Psy Shock again or not, and he goes out into the Reuniclus, and that means this thing is going to get an opportunity to set up on me, which is pretty annoying. Um, it is also entertaining to have a Burn Pokemon and a Poison Pokemon in battle, and both of them have Magic Guard, so it's like, yeah, we're suffering from these ailments, but they, at the same time, they don't really bother us. Uh, he goes for Psychic, which does show me that if we get into a Calm Mind War, I will win it, because um, he doesn't have a good way to hit me, as my special defense is being boosted. But I just went for Calm Mind again, expecting him to stay in there. And now this sucks, I really should have attacked on that turn. If I had hit the uh, Azumar on the way in, that would have been pretty nice. But now it's going to be a roll if I can live a hit from it. And he just goes straight for play rough and is like, don't die. Okay, cool. Cool. I didn't do as much damage as I thought. But I'm still in that roll for a 2-hit KO type dealio. And that critical hit on him definitely mattered. Just because Zoom Roll's base HP is so high. And I only had plus one on my special attack when I had no special attack investment. Uh, so... Even though that was a roll, whether or not he could 2 KO me, he can definitely KO me with Garchomp from here. And seeing that he only does that much damage with Iron Head with a crit means that he's Scarfed, which kind of sucks because I don't have any HP on my Obama Snow. So I will need to get some HP um, either back with Giga Drain or just put him in a range where I can KO him with an Ice Shard. Expecting the Reuniclus to try to switch in there, I just went straight for Hydro Pump. I could have gone for Will-O-Wisp, which would have been nice too, but I thought that was a little bit predictable. And Rita Clisk could come right into that. Uh, so here we're just going to go for Volt Switch again to keep on piling on damage onto the Amoongus. And then he predicts my switch out once again with Hidden Power Fire. I didn't switch out last time, so I thought he would predict me to stay in. I don't know if I'm just predictable or if he's just that good. I'm going to assume it's a mixture, because you have to be good in order to make the prediction. Um, he does go ahead and fodder off his Reuniclus. Um, I get a delicious Colber Berry. 
that doesn't really help me out very much. <laughs> Too bad Reuniclus wasn't holding a Citrus Berry. That would have been nice. Um, but just in case he's not Scarfed right here, I tried to go for Swords Dance. Uh, also, in case he went for a move that could possibly miss. So I, I, I knew Bullet Punch wouldn't do very much. But uh, if I could catch him on a weird switch out or something like that, that would have been really, really nice. Now, I do go ahead and burn Amoongus here just because he can't switch into Reuniclus to absorb burns anymore. And that'll be nice just to get some residual damage. I miss a Hydro Pump, which matters only in the sense that I was trying to keep Amoongus in range of a Blizzard or Ice Shard. And if he gets all that HP back, really doesn't make it realistic to take him out with the Blizzard. So, but that's okay. I can go for Pain Split and get back a smidgen of an HP stat there. Uh, get another Giga Drain. Not really working out here. Um, I can go for Pain Split again, but this is a losing battle in this Pain Split Giga Drain warfare that we're having here. So I just go for Hydro Pump again to put on some more damage. I know he won't get back very much if he KOs me with Giga Drain. And fortunately I connect. That would have been really annoying if I missed there. But I did get him back down into the range where um, Obama Snow can KO him with Blizzard. So that was the most important thing right there. So we can go back out into Obama Snow. I, I was going, should I just go for Ice Shard on the off chance that he has some weird speed investment? I don't have any speed investment besides just one point of speed on Obama Snow. But uh, I also figured, mm, Milting might be coming in with Thick Fat. And I was hoping that I would do more damage than I actually ended up doing. But since my other moves were Earthquake, I actually didn't expect to do too much damage to it. It makes another incredible play going for Milk Drink right there when I could have just gone, I don't know, for an offensive move. He also had, was risking the chance of being frozen. But at the end of the day, pretty safe play with Thick Fat. Uh, Earthquake does next to negligible damage to Clefable, so I was pretty impressed with that. Um, I don't really want to Moonlight while I have Hail up, and Hail's going to be here for two more turns. So I wanted to go ahead and put some more damage on him to force him into going for um, the Milk Drink. But since I figured he'd probably switch out right there, I did want to use this opportunity to get my HP back. Because it's important that I'm at a higher range of HP against Amoongus because I don't have any Calm Minds up yet. Um, I was also afraid of him getting a critical hit. Uh, so we're just going to keep on moonlighting while the hail and the burn whittles down his Amoongus. And if he goes for Sludge Bomb, that means he's not recovering HP with Giga Drain. So that was pretty important. But wow, after all my stats are erased and I don't have a plus one from Calm Mind, that Sludge Bomb does a ton of damage. Uh, so we're just going to moonlight again. Now that the hail is gone, I'm going to get back a lot more HP. And he's just getting whittled down by burn, which is really, really nice. I wanted to make sure that I could KO him with a Psy Shock before uh, attacking. And I don't really have enough HP to take on the Garchomp, which is unfortunate. But this does give me the, the um, opportunity to at least swing the differential in my favor. I could have kept going for Moonlight and just letting him get whittled down by burn. But then I'm risking the crit game there, and, and a crit definitely would have put me out of commission. So... Here, if he's max attack, he kills me with the Iron Head, and of course he is, because it's a Scarf Chomp. But that's going to be the end of the battle, because I can't KO him from that range with my uh, Obama Snow. So if I had just, I, I don't know if the um, Bullet Punch misplay earlier was the, the play there. I don't know, I was just trying to make a really, really serious overprediction with Caesar against the Garchomp. And that actually might have been my undoing. I don't think it ended up mattering though because he still had Miltank in the back. And Miltank outsped Obama Snow, plus he had Thick Fat for my Ice Shard. So it still would have been a 1-0 loss, even if I had made that play earlier. But either way, I enjoyed the battle. And for this wonderful quality, you have my opponent uh, to thank. So thank you very much, Kelly, for recording in nice high quality for me. <laughs> And that means we are going to be moving on in a week six for the next upload. And that means we're going to be halfway, more than halfway through the season. So look forward to that. Week six is going to be a bit of a nail biter up against the um, AS Monferno. So that's Onesie Bennett. And I know he's a great battler. So that'll be fun. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye now.